Hi everybody, this is Todd Oltoff with Max Stadium coming back at you with another screencast. And this week we're going to continue our look at OwnCloud. And we're going to take a look at some of the things that you can add to OwnCloud to customize it a little bit beyond the basic installation. Now, as I talked about previously in some of the previous OwnCloud uh, tutorials that we've done, we talked about how to set up OwnCloud, and we talked about each of the services that we have here built into OwnCloud on the sidebar. Now, there are other services that we can add uh, to your own cloud installation, and those are called plugins within own cloud. And so what I'm going to do is walk you through uh, some of the plugins uh, and let you know how they work. How do you enable them so that they show up in your own cloud instance? Uh, I'm also going to cover how do you install third party uh, plugins that may not already be installed in own cloud in the basic installation. So I'll walk you through how to set those things up so that you can begin to customize own cloud and make it your own. Now to get into the plugins area, you want to come up here uh, to your uh, menu up here, and you want to go to the apps area. Uh, the apps area are where all of those uh, applications are pre-installed. And so you can see right here we've got a list of applications. Now a couple of things as we get started. The first thing is that the ones in bold are applications that are already installed. So you can see all of these things on the top are ones that we've already got installed in OwnCloud. You can see we've got Calendar, and there's the Calendar right there. Contacts, that's installed there. Uh, we've got some things kind of behind the scenes that may not show up. Uh, and if you remember previously, uh, I showed you how, with this plugin right here, how to install uh, Open Directory so that your Open Directory users can log in with their uh, user accounts into OwnCloud. And so if you haven't seen that yet, you might want to go back and take a look at that tutorial where I cover how to do that. So all of these up here in bold are already installed. And then you can see down here we have ones that have not been installed yet and including ones that they show are third-party applications that come pre-installed and there's some that are recommended uh, installations that ones that are third-party that they recommend uh, that you might want to try out and so each of them has uh, things that are prerequisites uh, some of them work with the basic SQLite uh, database that we installed initially uh, some of them require things like MySQL or a more robust database and so I won't be covering those uh, because those applications are ones that require uh, a little bit more uh, uh, things in the background to have those things installed. So uh, what I want to do is let me just walk you through uh, some of these uh, applications that you can install and give you an idea of how that works. Uh, now just looking down here, uh, you notice that there's uh, external storage support. And so if I just click on this, uh, to install a plugin, you basically just enable it. And you can see now it's enabled, right? It's turned bold, and you notice that there's a disable now because you can uninstall apps as well just by disabling them. Now, this external storage support adds support for you to store uh, some of your own cloud files and things on an external, uh, you know, either an external drive or service. Uh, if you come in here to admin, and you'll notice it didn't add anything to the sidebar because it's not that kind of application. This is a, as an add-on. If you come into uh, admin here and you, and you come down here, you'll notice that now all of a sudden this external storage area has shown up. And so what I can do is add a particular folder to add the storage, or if I wanted to, I can come in here and I can add actually add things like Dropbox. If I wanted to have Dropbox as, uh, as an external storage, I'd put in the uh, app key uh, and my secret for that, and, uh, and then basically I would have Dropbox available for storage. So I'm just going to delete that because I'm not going to use it. But I just wanted to show you that you can extend uh, own cloud by having your, extor your storage actually in the cloud as opposed to on your server. Now, in the installation that I did with you earlier, we are storing things on a, a separate folder actually on our server, uh, which is a pretty, uh, you know, it's a little more secure because it's on your server. But if you wanted to, you could add external storage through this means. All right, so let's go take a look at a couple other ones here. Let me just go back into uh, apps here and let those load. All right, so now let's take a look at some of uh, some of the other ones that we've got here. Uh, if you scroll down, you notice we've got the ability to add a tasks uh, application, which allows you to track your tasks, kind of GTD type stuff. If I just click Enable here, you'll notice that now it's added this tasks thing on the sidebar. And let me just click on that, because now we have a new application that we've added. And let's go to Tasks. And you can see here, now we've got uh, a full task manager built in here. Here are your different contexts that you can use for where the tasks take place. Uh, you can add a task if you want to. And when you do that, it comes in here. You can add a title to it. Let me just uh, add, maybe let's say, get, get milk. Okay, maybe I got to go to the store and get milk. Uh, I can add more things to it. I can uh, put it on any list that I want to. All these lists down here, I can add it to that list. Maybe this is for a birthday. 
So I've added it to the birthday list. I can put a location down if I want to. Uh, due date, the calendar pops up. I can say it's due you know, on Christmas Day, something like that. Uh, and so now I've got my task uh, added to this list. And if I add a few of them, I can actually order them. I can order them by when they're due. I can order them when they're complete. Those things uh, are on there. I can also sort by these things on the side. You notice if I click work, the task doesn't show up, and that's because it's a, on the birthday list. If I click birthday, uh, get rid of work, there it is. The milk uh, task shows up there. Uh, the nice thing on the task thing, too, is that, like I said, if I click another one, the task disappears because I only put it on one task list. So you can say, show me the tasks that are on multiple lists, and it'll show those. So again, you know, a lot of times people have their own task managers, but if you wanted to add one into own cloud, maybe for collaboration, uh, where everybody can see these task lists and work off of them, uh, it is it is a nice uh, plugin to have uh, in your own cloud install. And again, if you you can click that you've done it, and you can see it puts the little line through it, and it's done. I can uh, say by the order list. You know, I can order it by birthday, order by complete, uh, all of those kinds of things. So that's the tasks plugin. So you get an idea of how that works. Uh, let's go back and just take a look at uh, a few others that are uh, nice ones to have or popular ones. Let me just uh, let's scroll down here. Uh, another one that you can add is this files move. Uh, plugin and basically all it does is it just adds a uh, you know adds a plugin that uh, puts on goes onto the files application that allows you to move things. Let me just enable this. I'll show you where that shows up. Okay, now we see that it's good. If you go into files here, once you add this files move uh, plugin, let's get back to the main screen here. And if I just click, you'll notice that I've got on this move button here, and I got I can click this. Now I can actually copy it and move it to wherever I want to move it. I can move it into a folder if I've got one. If I had a folder, those would show up here. And so now I've got this option to move it as opposed to just rename it and, and uh, those sorts of things. So uh, again, it's just a, a little add-on. It's something that wasn't included in the default install, but it just makes your uh, own cloud instance a little bit more uh, customized and adds some of the things you might want to have available. Okay, let's take a look at a few more here, and then I'll show you how to install uh, third-party ones that may not be in here. Okay, let's scroll down here. Uh, another one that's uh, that's recommended is Shorty, and uh, Shorty is uh, is an application that allows you to keep track of bookmarks uh, and things like that, where you can add those uh, add those bookmarks. Uh, let's just uh, let me enable it here for a minute. So it's going to actually enable that plugin and uh, put that on there. Uh, but it adds it adds plugins and things to uh, to what you set up here. So let's take a look at it. Let's just go back over here to files for a minute. You'll notice that now Shorty is added in the sidebar. So I'm just going to click on Shorty. And basically here, here this is Shorty. And so you have this uh, bookmarklet that you can drag up to your web browser. And you, you can drag that up to the top and it allows you to add bookmarks as you go. Uh, you also have um, the settings here. Let's go to the settings here for Shorty. So you can put the status as private. You have a back-end service, and what it does is it not only adds the bookmark, but it adds a bookmark shortcut for you uh, that you can then send to each other. You can share it. Uh, you don't have to uh, you know, go to a, a shortening service. It actually does it for you automatically. And you can see here you can pick different services uh, that you want. Uh, you know, the, the uh, tiny service, or you could do a Google service for it. And it's basically going to just shorten the URL. And you can see here it's going to shorten it down to uh, this uh, tiny URL with, uh, with an ID to it. Uh, you can also enable SMS so that you can, um, you know, send Shorty versus SMS. So if I just enable that, that allows me to send a text message with the link if I wanted to, if I wanted to share that with somebody. And it uh, gives me those kinds of uh, those kind of opportunities to set those up. So I'm just going to leave that alone. You can come back to home here. And uh, if you go into home, it just tells you a little bit more about how Shorty works. Uh, let me just pop out of that for a minute. And so you can then uh, start to add links. So if I click New Shorty, it has this drop down here. And let's just say I'm going to type in, um, you know, apple.com, let's say. And uh, so now what it's done is it's found the, the website here for me. And uh, what I can do is just uh, take this website and I can put, uh, I've got all the information on it. You can see it's a safe website and all that. I can actually put notes on this if I wanted to. Uh, just say this is a great website. You know, and put that on there. So I've got that set and ready to go. I've got Apple as the title and I can add as new. 
And so now it's added that uh, bookmark there for me. You can see it's added it on here. Now I have various options I can do with it. I can show the details of it just by clicking this and it brings the drop down. And you notice now I've got the tiny URL that's set up here that I can use to share. And it shows the relay and everything else about uh, this particular bookmark in here. Uh, I can also uh, edit it by clicking this. I can modify it if I want to. I can delete it. Uh, I can also share it, and uh, I can open uh, a target. I can open it in a, a web browser. So if I click Share, now you see I have the option to share it uh, in various ways. I can share it, uh, you know, I can share it through this, uh, through uh, at, you know, through doing it uh, by email. I can share it uh, by copying it to the clipboard. Uh, I can also, what's interesting here, I can also show it as a QR code so that I could send that to people and they could just scan it uh, and it'll show up. So again, uh, just kind of a nice, uh, a nice shortcut uh, kind of bookmarks uh, application that you can add. And then you can share all these bookmarks. So those that log into it, they can see all of these things, share them back and forth. And again, it's just a, it's just a nice little extension. Like I said, you can also add a bookmarks bar at the top and then just click it and it'll automatically add it into Shorty for you. All right, so that's a recommended one, and you can see why. It's kind of a nice uh, application. Let's just come back here for a minute into the apps uh, so you can see uh, just a, a few more of these. Uh, it's got things for uh, a journal where you can actually uh, start a journal up. Uh, it does have a news reader uh, that's in there that you can, uh, that you can add. Uh, again, it needs, uh, it, it's not currently working with SQLite, so you'd have to have a, a, a MySQL running for that to work. Uh, you've got a notes application that you can add if you wanted to. So you get the idea. There's a lot of different applications that you can add. Uh, now what I want to do now is let me just show you how you can add a third-party application that may not be listed here, uh, just to show you that there are a lot of applications that can really extend OwnCloud. So let's take a look at that. Okay, here we are uh, back over on the server. And uh, to add applications to OwnCloud, if you just go to apps.owncloud.com, uh, you'll see a bunch of applications that people have added, different things that you can add to extend OwnCloud. And uh, you can see that there's just a bunch of different things. Shorty was a third-party application we just showed you. You can see that that's sitting here. Uh, so this, there's a number of applications. So what I want to do is show you how to install one of these. So we're going to look at Flux Compensator. Let me just click more on this. Now what Flux Compensator does is it gives you kind of handles to extend the desktop one way or the other. And I'm going to show you how it works once we install it. Uh, but basically, in order to install the application, you just come down here and click Download. And it's going to now download the application to your Downloads folder. So let me just uh, put this down here. And let me go to the Downloads folder. And you can see there I've got Flux uh, Compensator right there. And here's all of the information that will make this plugin work. Now, to install it, what I need to do is I just need to go into uh, the actual uh, uh, folder where the site website is. So let me just scroll all the way back here. You're going to go to your, uh, your hard drive, your library folder, server. You go to web, data, into your sites folder, and then to wherever your own cloud instance is. And then there's a folder in there called apps right here. Now what you want to do is create a new folder in here. And what I did is I just named it for Flux Compensator. Now again, you don't want any spaces or anything in it. You want to, if you're going to put a space, you want to put the little... Um, the little uh, line right here to connect them together, okay? And then what you're going to do is you're going to take these contents here and you're going to drag them in and copy them over here. You can see that I've done that uh, already for you here so that we don't have to wait. But you just copy them right into here. It's going to ask you to authenticate with your uh, administrator password. But once you do that, all of that information is in there and you have now installed the, this plugin uh, into OwnCloud. And so what I'm going to show you is uh, I'm going to show you now I'm going to go back to my remote machine and I'm going to show you what it looks like now that we've installed that. But that's simply how you install these uh, these different applications. So as you go through the website and you might find uh, other applications that you're interested in here, that's all you've got to do is download them and walk through those steps to install them. So now let's go back over to my uh, to my desktop client and let's take a look and see what it looks like in, in own cloud from the web browser. Okay, here we are on the web browser on my other client. Let me just uh, scroll down here and let's see. And you can see right there, the application's been installed. This Flux Compensator that I told you about that we just installed, now it's shown up right here in the sidebar on the app screen. Uh, we're gonna enable that just because I wanna show you how, uh, how that works as well. And let's just go over to a main screen. But you can see how easy it is to install these applications. Some of them require more than one plugin to work, so you need to know that when you get started.
Now what Flux Compensator did is it just added these little handles down here and one up here. And so if you're on a small screen and you don't need all of this real estate over here taken up because you want to work within here, all you got to do is click this little area and it makes the sidebar disappear. And I can click this and it makes the top bar disappear. And now my workspace is cleaner. I don't have to worry about the menus and everything. I can bring them back whenever I want just by clicking these little, uh, the little handles again. And I can put it right back to where it was uh, on the regular desktop client. So again, not a major thing, but it is kind of a nice thing that allows you to customize own cloud. Well, that's all I have for this week. Uh, I'll be back at you next time with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac in a hosted environment.